<laughs> let's be honest, Samsung DeX has pretty much revolutionized the way in which people use smartphones and tablets. But let's say you don't have a Samsung phone or tablet, or you do have a Samsung phone or tablet, but it doesn't have DeX enabled. I'm going to show you today how you can get what is a very similar experience to DeX and it will go on any Android tablet running Android 8.0 or above. Let's take a look. So, you might be wondering how do we enable this what is similar to DeX mode. The first thing we do is go into our settings on the tablet. So on my tablet here, there's a little uh, cog in the top right hand corner which I press on and I go into the settings and then I need to go into about tablet and then software information just keep tapping on build number until it asks for your pin so it'll count down and then it'll appear obviously gonna edit this bit out so you can't see my pin You'll then see a notification at the bottom saying developer mode has been enabled. So now, what you will find, if you come out of software information and over on the left hand side, you should see developer mode, although it's not actually showing yet. Um, so I'll just come out of settings and go back in. <coughs> so there we go. At the bottom, on the left hand side, developer options. So if you go into that, so once you're in developer options, you just need to scroll down until you find a setting, which on my tablet it is quite low down, and it is called this one force activities to be resizable. So you switch that on, you go back onto your home screen, and if you go into the Play Store and you want to search for an app called taskbar and it should come up at the top and it says taskbar PC style productivity for Android so if you install that it's a very small download so it shouldn't take long to install on your tablet now once that's installed reboot your tablet or you may have a few issues so I'll just come back once I have rebooted Okay, so then in your apps, once you've had a reboot, you are looking for the app called Taskbar, which it is there on mine, and you want to switch it on at the top and grant permission. Now that permission is to allow that the app to appear on top of others, and then if you go back, and then you can change some settings. So. On mine, I want it set up so it's in the bottom left. Uh, I only want the search bar visible if there's a hardware keyboard connected. Um, I want the taskbar to collapse when I'm selecting items or when the on-screen keyboard is shown. And I want it to launch on boot. And our system notification settings, I'm going to leave that on. Now the reason for that is it will always appear well, it's not there at the moment, but uh, it will appear at the top of the screen as a notification. So there's a few uh, a few things you can change here, like you can change the, the number of recent or pinned apps, and that's the number of applications that will appear in the bottom left-hand corner next to the taskbar. Very handy for multitasking. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of the, uh, the settings here. Uh, I'll just go through a few. Once you've set it as you want it, then you can start using it. So as you'll see now, it's appeared in the bottom left hand corner for me. So if I now press on that little arrow in the bottom left hand corner, I can select my apps from here. A bit like a start menu. And I've also got controls here to do... Oh, you need to activate this actually. So you need permission to be able to switch through applications. And in here, you want to set taskbar to on. And then you can just close that down. As you saw, that is now in a window. So we'll open up a bit of YouTube. Now, if, a, if a, an application opens in full screen mode, 
then what you need to do is drag from the top left hand corner and what will happen the app will resize and you can drag it around as you like and then you can resize that sort of thing um, and then let's open let's say for example the play store again so we've got it open on that taskbar app we'll just drag down from the left top left and then there we go it's resized so we've now got YouTube on the screen and also the app store and it does support some drag and drop functions which is very nice uh, I didn't expect it to but it does um, and you can also you can you can switch apps using the bottom right hand corner here so if for example YouTube I want to just minimize that for now it will appear in the bottom right hand corner and I can move it wherever I want on the screen and then if I tap on it it will open up just like you get on Samsung DeX so what I've shown you today is on a 2016 Samsung Galaxy Tab A which is a good device uh, there's a link below if you uh, want to purchase one um, but this is not designed to run DeX, it won't run DeX itself but I can run what is pretty much DeX and I can also link it up to a Chromecast and use a second display uh, it will just replicate what's on the uh, tablet itself so it's not quite as good as DeX but you can simulate a second display on a lot of Android tablets so you can plug in a USB-C dongle to some devices, you do need to check to make sure it will deliver uh, video over the HDMI USB-C rather. Um, but a lot of new devices do, a lot of phones do, so what you can do is plug one of these little USB-C to HDMI and USB etc thingies, uh, dongles I think you'd call them, and you can plug one in plug it into a television and use a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse or indeed a USB keyboard and mouse if you so wish. Now I have this which I'll put it close to the camera so it looks massive but when you look at it next to this 10 inch tablet it's actually tiny. What I do when I am wanting to be productive on a tablet is this. So I have a case which folds up you know the drill these are ten a penny and it will sit flat and the tablet will sit up and I will connect this via Bluetooth and you'll notice the touchpad there so I have a hardware keyboard and a hardware touchpad and I have window mode and that is on a tablet which you can now pick up for uh, not very much money even the 2019 version of it isn't very much. Uh, we're talking sub £200. So this is now going to take part in my product review. So if I get any phones or tablets and they run Android 8.1 um, then I will be enabling multi-window and measuring the performance. Not necessarily benchmarks but I just want to show you practically speaking if you're watching a YouTube video and you've got a Chrome session open How's it going to perform? I do think the one gigabyte of RAM devices are going to struggle with this, but we can give it a go. So let me know what you think to this little gem that I have discovered. Um, please do put your comments below and click like if you do like this method of getting multi-window active on devices that don't have it outside the box. And if you don't like it, then hit the thumbs down and Subscribe whether you like it or not. I'll see you next time. See you later. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't go yet. Don't forget, you can actually run this on a, an Android TV box. And you could, in theory, replace your desktop PC. Ish. Now I'm going. See you later.